Welcome to this video about FPGA interfacing with analog devices AD7616. AD7616 contains two parallel ADC devices. The ADCs perform sampling of input signals at the same time simultaneously. The device has 16 analog inputs, so each capture sample is 16 bits. The device performs sampling on the A and B analog inputs at the same time. You can program the device and define different analog voltage range for each of these analog inputs. The output of the device supports different formats. It can put out the data in parallel fashion or it can output the data in serial mode. The device has an interface for configuration and control. There are registers inside the device that we can program and with those registers we can define the behavior of the device. This kit contains an FPGA IP for interfacing to analog devices AD7616 device. The IP allows us to read the acquired samples from the device using the two-wire serial interface. So total, there will be eight wires between the FPGA and this device. The IP supports both software and hardware modes of operation. In software mode, the IP performs programming of all of the registers of AD7616 device itself. Also, the IP captures the incoming samples and passes the samples through XI stream interfaces to the next blocks inside the FPGA. So the IP can operate without any CPU. You don't need any CPU, you don't need any software for programming the AD7616 device. The IP performs all of the programming itself. The IP consumes very low FPGA resources. It consumes something around 100 LUTs and around 200 flip-flops. This allows the users to use the valuable FPGA resources for their own pro signal processing or control tasks. Here I want to show a practical example. The goal is to show how easy it is to use the IP. In our hardware setup, we have the AD7616 evaluation kit. It's connected to our Zinc Zetern 7020 board through basically eight wires and plus the ground. Two of these wires are transferring the data. I have created the first step of my Vivado project. The first step is basically a simple block diagram with Zinc PS and then an ELA. I use the Zinc PS in this design only as the clock source. I go ahead and add the IP that I have created for interfacing to AD7616 device. Here is the interface from the IP to AD7616 device. So I, I do create interface port and that's all basically you need to do to make the connection to the device. These are going to be the pins of the FPGA. So for these pins, we need a constraint file. The kit contains example constraint files for Zetern and Zboard at the moment. By double clicking on the IP, I can decide which one of the analog signals, which one of the 16 analog signals that are entering the device I want to have on the output of the IP. I can enable all of these or the ones that I want to use at the moment. Looking at the setup that we have here, we're basically using A1, A2, B0, and B3. These guys are connected at the moment to waveform generators. The waveform generator produces a chirp signal on V0B. It produces a kind of ramp on V3B. Then another function generator is producing a kind of reverse exponential pulse on A1. And then we have a simple sinusoid on A2. So I go ahead and enable those ports that I need. As I said, you can enable all of these guys. 
For each of the interfaces, I can define the range of analog input signal related to that interface. So we are using V0B. For example, let's say this is a signal between minus and plus 5 volt. We are using A1. Again, we are using A2. And then we are using V3B. So by enabling these, these interfaces, as you see, I have these ports, these basically interfaces appearing here. Now I have my ELA and I want to see the waveform. So I just simply make a connection between these three, these, these interfaces. And then this is my clock. I simply connect the clock to clock inputs for my IP and for the ELA. Right now this clock is 50 MHz. I have the reset signal which gets connected to the reset input of the ELA and our IP. This is all we need to do. Our design is ready. Basically what happens is IP does all of the programming needed for AD7616. As described before, the interface that we have here is using two-wire two serial mode. So I go ahead and generate the beta stream for this design. The beta stream is generated. Before we continue, let's open the implemented design and have a look at area consumption of our IP. So here is their utilization report for, for our design. Obviously our IP is inside design one. So I open this and this is our IP. As you see, our IP is consuming 82 LUTs and 199 flip-flops. Now, for this design that I, I have here, I need to enable this clock so that our circuit can operate fine. So I export the XSA file for my hardware and then I use this X XSA file inside the Vitus environment to create a very simple hello world application. Here is our Vitus environment and here is our hello world application. The purpose here is only to enable the clock that we have here on this interface. As we can see the hello world application doesn't contain any code. I simply go ahead and program my beta stream into the FPGA that I have. Coming back to Vivado environment, we can open hardware manager, we can connect to our board and we can watch basically the four interfaces that we have out of our IP. What is interesting for us is the data port, is the T data port on each of the interfaces. So I'm gonna put my ELA in the basic mode and I'm gonna define a capture setup and I'm going to use one of the T-valid signals from one of the ports as the capture condition. And now I'm going to trigger our ELA. It captures the output samples on each of the interfaces. In order to see something meaningful, I need to change the um, radix of the numbers which are appearing here and also the waveform type. So I'm going to right click, radix is going to be sign decimal because the numbers that the A2D puts out, they are basically two's complement number. And then the waveform is going to be analog waveform. So waveform style is analog. This is our chip signal. This is exactly the signal that our waveform generator produced for us. And now we see them. Um, our setup captures the waveform perfectly fine. This is the um, reverse exponential. I talked about it. This is our sinusoid. And finally, this is our RAM. Now the IP has a lot of capabilities and you can access all of the capabilities through the graphical user interface that you have here. First of all, as I described, you can enable, disable any of these ports and for each of the ports, you can define the voltage range that you have for the analog signal on that port. The IP also supports hardware mode operation for the AD7616 device. So if you want, you can put the IP in hardware mode operation. This is based on my experience, not really recommended since software mode 
is the mode that gives you the highest level of flexibility and the IP handles the software mode easily. The IP contains also an aggregate interface. That's when you, you really don't need these, these XI stream ports, but you need one single XI stream port that puts all of the sampled values for all of the 16 analog inputs as a stream, as one single stream amp, and sends it as the stream to the next, next block in your design, which usually can be a DMA block. So this aggregate port can be enabled and used in parallel with these ports. The IP also contains a simple debug interface. The simple debug interface gives you basically key debug information. For example, it tells you what's the, exactly the sampling rate at which you are sampling your analog signals at this moment in time. IP has the capability of switching to one wire mode. That's the mode in which the sample data is going to be transferred over only one wire. This is however, based on my experience, absolutely not recommended. I prefer to have both of the wires active. You can also easily enable the pattern generator. When you enable the pattern generator, the IP will configure AD7616 AD so that it starts putting predefined patterns on its output. And at the end, you can configure the IP and tell that for AD7616, you want to use an internal or external reference. In this package, you will find different example designs for the IP. For example, in the package, there exists a simple example design in which all of the stream outputs of the IP are enabled and a block performs simple processing, simple signal processing tasks on the incoming samples. This is one of the examples available inside the package. There is also another example available inside the package which the aggregate output of the IP is enabled it's connected to an XR DMA engine and the XR DMA engine puts all of the samples in the PSI DRAM memory. The PS is operating in a standalone mode. The package contains more videos. There exists a video which describes the architecture of the IP in detail. The video also describes each of the example designs. We also briefly look at the circuitry for AD7616. The connecting signals between the FPGA and the device. Thank you for watching this video.